Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Will Comer, Psycho Goldfish, Voices by Corey, and Zinzinix. Hello. Well, hello. 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 Everybody. Hello. Hello, hi, how are we doing? Welcome to the Newgrounds Podcast, a podcast for Newgrounds. I'm Will and uh, Jack and Corey are here too. Yeah, I'm here. I'm and out. Um, that's all I'm contractually obligated to say, so I'm out. Bye, everyone. But you didn't introduce me, Will. Will, <laughs> where's my introduction? I, I said, Jack, you said it so fast. I said your name so fast oh. that you couldn't hear it, but it was still technically said, so... I still need all the money I asked for you before. <laughs> all right. God, all right. it's been so long. I feel rusty. I'm on the show for the first time in like a month, and I'm nervous. Is this stage fright? This is weird. It, I don't know. It's either that or yeah. your heart's racing I mean, from all the caffeine you have going in your system. Everybody is <laughs> judging true. you, though. Like, you know. Well, yeah, but that I can handle, you know? Listening. Nobody judges okay. me more harshly than myself. Can you handle the judgment of God? <laughs> I can. I have this this nectar that helps me deal with that. Woo! There you go. <laughs> I'm already way ahead of you, brother. I'm already five deep. Yeah. Are you uh, still going to do no, what you said earlier to me <laughs> privately, which is that you're going to drink every time there's an awkward silence of any kind? That's going to be why there's awkward silence, because I'm drinking <laughs> and not talking. Cool. Well, because it's funny you said <sighs> that. I took a swig right now for that, you. Um, <laughs> this really interesting thought I had, it was... Uh, Drink! <laughs> See, this is easy. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna need more beer. <laughs> this isn't gonna. This isn't gonna last very long. By the end of this episode, Josh is just gonna be blacked out. <laughs> yeah, everybody's yeah. gonna be blacked out. Yeah, first episode. I can figure in a while that it's just kind of like hanging out, and we get to talk to everybody here and just talk about what's been going on. Because as far as I could tell, before this, we had like the biggest month and a half of anybody's podcast life. Oh, we had like 18 interviews in a row and somehow fit them into like four shows. I don't know. It was weird. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's like there was. And it was cool though, because they were prominent people. Right. Big names, like actual big names. And we kind of just stacked them right in front of each other uh, because we like to have success in blocks so that you can feel really good about us. And then we will uh, <laughs> do a very relaxing, casual episode. Yeah. After. I mean, we had Tom Fulp on the last one, and you can't top that. So we're just like, you know what? We're not going to have anybody on it. <laughs> That's right. We, Once we, you peak, we peaked. <laughs> we peaked early. We had Tom Fulp on, and then we had Johnny Utah on for like five minutes, and it was the best five minutes ever. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hardly for him shit. too. <laughs> oh. He was like, Ugh, I'm here. Bye. Yeah. No, that <laughs> show a was point. a train wreck. It was. Uh, it, it's all my fault. I'll take full responsibility. But yeah, that show was a train wreck. Uh, it was fun at make parts. Sure when you, make sure you go back and vote zero because it's got way too high of a score, guys. We, we need you to them. bring the score down. Way down, okay? This episode this episode's a five-star episode. Last episode, one and a half at best. You're going to say that and our guys are going to go and five-star it just to spite you specifically. It's going to be the best-rated episode we've ever had. I've seen how this goes. Well, that's because they're gullible, and it's I just manipulated re- them. Reverse psychology. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Corey knows what I did. I actually did that to my daughter the exactly. other day. <laughs> She's, uh, I make my kids do chores and shit, so one of the chores they have to do is like dishes and things like that. And we have a rule where if the kids get the dishwasher emptied before everybody's done eating, then all the grown-ups have to put their own dishes in the dishwasher. And Ooh. so my wife got done eating before she finished emptying, but I'm a slacker. I sat in the living room just taking my time eating. <laughs> and... Some conversation with her mom, she was teasing her, going, Ma, you got, I have to put your dish in the dishwasher. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what would make your mom really mad? If you put my dish in the dishwasher for me. And she was like, yeah! <laughs> that's <laughs> smart. That's my, that's my thing. Just, you know, emotionally manipulate my children. To be right, married. just stir the household pot every day. <laughs> just see what lengths you can drive people to. Exactly. That's fun. And now I'm doing it to the, to our audience. So go vote 1.5, guys. 1.5, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a good episode. It was a fun episode. It might have set the record for most guests in any episode. 
of any podcast. That could be, unless you count the Pico Day one that never got recorded. <laughs> That's true. Speaking of uh, things that didn't get recorded or slightly got recorded, I, I heard you had a lot of fun during St. Patrick's Day. I don't really remember. I don't yeah. know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it was fun. Yeah. I think I came in for like a couple of minutes at the end and just kind of heard what was going on. I was like, all right, well, I got to get to bed, but y'all have fun. You guys uh, <laughs> just keep doing your thing. That was kind of like me. I, I hopped on for maybe 10 minutes at the beginning, you know, gave a little quick tidbits and then I had to, you know, leave. Unfortunately, I would have stayed. I wanted to stay the entire time, but I had to be up <laughs> at 2 a.m. the next morning for work. So that <sighs> wasn't too fun. <laughs> I got to go back and listen. If I didn't to have to, I would have gotten drunk with yeah, you. Yeah, I got to go back and listen to it. It is on our YouTube channel for anybody who actually wants to listen to it. We had no intention of editing it or like even using high quality audio. It is what it is, but it does exist. <laughs> it's there somewhere. It's, yeah, it, it is. Corey, I relate to you on the like having to wake up at 2 a.m. so you can have fun, but sort of not. Because like St. Patrick's Day is weird that way. I was talking to Courtney about this earlier. Like, if it was really going to be the drinking holiday in America, you'd think America would have taken, like, I don't know, the liberty to put it on a Saturday of St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been nice to you just sit back and casually drink and black out with the homies on a live <laughs> NGP episode. But no, I just had to sit in for a couple minutes, laugh and say a few little funny ha-has and then drop out and then wake up early in the morning just so I could... Watch concrete. It, it was majestic. Well, we, we got you covered now. We're together now. We've got alcohol now. We're hanging out now. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. Happy spring break, Corey. Happy spring break, Josh. Yay, I'll drink to Woo! That. Wild spring break party. You guys can't oh, see it right now, party. but I am we showing my nipples. Party. Just for you guys. <laughs> oh, I can see it. <laughs> I'm looking it's right now. Spring break party. <laughs> Don't look too hard. Oh. Did that just wink back at me? Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know why you have that many, though. I didn't think you would have much more than two. But, I mean, do you play, like, connect the dots with that shit? Like, can you make a sailboat or something? <laughs> I think if you cross your eyes, it's actually one of those 3D magic eyes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, Sin. Well, look who Whoa. crawled into wow. the Oh, my God. Yeah, I just got off of work. It's... 9 10 p.m. Yeah, I'm home now. And, and now you got to be our designated driver. Yo, no, I'm going out tonight. I've been working too much. I'm gonna <laughs> get drunk and tell people, Hey, do you know the New Grounds podcast? Hell and they're yeah. like, Yeah, and they'll be like, Yeah, <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. <laughs> They'd be like, I don't recognize you. And then I laugh, and then like, Oh, that guy. Oh, it's that fan, guy. Fan it's that drunk. guy. Yeah. <laughs> Zen, did you have fun oh, with the shit, podcast man. this past month? Yeah. No. No, that's too bad. I I hate, <laughs> I really do not like YouTube and having a poster, it kills me. But What's your least favorite part of making the viral the looking videos? The motherfucking thumbnails. Like, you have to be catchy. <laughs> like, and I have no energy for that. All I care about is, like, oh, okay, we interviewed someone. Now they deserve to be on other platforms and reach right. more people. You know, it's like more for them than it is for us. But I, if, if I'm putting something on YouTube, like, I'm going to make a little video for it or a thumbnail for it, and I got to make it look good. It just sucks spending that time doing that. You find the things to do within the thing you're doing. Yeah. It's like, I'm making a video, therefore it needs to have art, but therefore it should have some animation and it looks awesome. And then you release these YouTube videos that are like almost cooler than the episode itself because there's some badass animation going at the same time. Right. Well, that's that just that's I don't know. If you meet anyone on Newgrounds, you always want to do shit that looks good. Like you're not just gonna put something out there. I yeah. say, who's putting the little animations together on the the YouTube videos? Me. That's me. Dude, hell yeah. <laughs> that's our boy. All you gotta do is you go to Adobe Animate and then you make a little loop for it and then you export it as a as a movie and then you make it the, the length of the audio. Then you go to Windows Movie Maker. Like you see what I'm saying? It's like all this <laughs> fucking work. You yeah. gotta find all the sprites. And then I animated uh Moki doing the fucking spooky dance. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like shit. <laughs> I hate this. Oh the boys. Like, it sounds so easy though. Like I I am not skilled enough or 
or talented to do that. Neither was I. I was guessing at everything. I'm like, I could probably do this. It was like, <laughs> oh, more power to you. <laughs> the the Moki Spooky Dance was actually really good. I'm an animator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, I don't know why, but there is something really fun to me about making the like shitty viral YouTube thumbnails. It just kind of feels like when you play into it, it gets fun. I know you don't feel that way. So I laugh whenever I'm like, I don't know why I'm getting so much joy out of it. Well, Will, you're really good at it. And that's just that's suspect. Like the first one Will showed me was like it was that Friday Night Funkin' highlight. And it says Kawhi Sprite's real voice in yellow text with an arrow pointing to like the, the boyfriend. And it was it was classic clickbait. And I'm like, Will, what are we turning into? What are we doing? Why am I so openly letting us turn into like sell out garbage YouTube fodder? Yes. It just feels so um, good. Speaking of which, are we doing the Friday Night Funkin' Jam? Are we doing that? That's up to uh, that's up to the Friday Night Funkin' peeps. I think after week seven, we'll hear more about it. Well, can't we just do it? Well, we didn't ask the Among Us people if we could host the 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 like videos on here. I feel like that's something we do, right? We just yeah, we just no, stream right. all the all the animations back to back to back and sit here five and a half hours, and then Tom maybe might show up out of nowhere, <laughs> right? And be there for four hours too. Yeah, you're right. Like it's not like we have to. Ask their permission. Yeah, a, a watch along is just a watch along. It's like, oh, we're just watching the videos together and enjoying them. I think that's totally true. Yeah. Well, there's no official Friday Night Funkin' Discord server either. So we, we we kind of are that in our own little stupid way. I know. Our <laughs> Friday Night Funkin' channel, which you guys should all go and post on, is, yeah, like some of the most Newgrounds, Newgrounds people content I see about Friday Night Funkin'. Although the TikTok yeah. and Reddit people are crazy about it. Have you guys seen like the general internet fandom of Friday Night Funkin' lately? Oh, it's just on Twitter. Up. Buck wild. There's like a TikTok, there's like a chunk of TikTok devoted to it. The subreddit, I follow the subreddit and sometimes I'm just like drinking my coffee in the morning and on Reddit, I'm seeing nothing but like Friday Night Funkin' mods and the guy with the bomb for a head and like the tricky clown for madness and like they're doing yeah. so many cool things. Yeah, well, have you seen the YouTube videos? Just creating a mod for it, and someone will get like a million views for like just making a mod for it, and then yeah. like someone will do a playthrough, and they'll get a million views. Like it's so it's blown up so much. It's crazy. I one of the know. one of the funny things that I saw is, you know, once UG got released, someone got so impatient they actually created their own <laughs> their own level for it. Yeah. Oh, they like, like made it before it actually really got made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. And quite quite honestly, that's my favorite song off of you know, off of the game now. Just just that song alone. I all the songs are freaking amazing. They're banging. But that that one just tops my list now. I, I can listen to it on, on repeat. I love it so much. <laughs> I say I say it on uh I've said it on Twitter a few times too. Um like once I pick up my daughter uh from daycare, they will jump in the car and first thing she tells me, Daddy, silly songs. I'm like, silly songs, you wanna listen to the silly songs? Yeah. And she's talking about the Friday Night Funkin' songs. She loves wow. the songs. <laughs> I, I played, I think I played, I, I think it was High, you know, uh, the second song from week four. And she was laughing and giggling when I was playing. I'm like, do you like these songs? She goes, yeah. I'm like, okay. Aww. So I went I went from uh, the first song from week one, and I just let him play through, and she was laughing the entire time. So now it's daddy silly songs, daddy silly <gasps> songs. Aww. So the game reaches every age group possible. <laughs> That's <It's> adorable awesome. <laughs> and awesome. I, you should tell Kawhi Sprite that. He might actually get a kick out of that. Like, oh, actually, like people of different ages are into my music. I don't know. As yeah, I said I, that, I was like thinking about it. Like, oh, somebody's <laughs> kid. No, but it's cool. It's good. It, it's quite yeah. funny, though. The I think the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. It really sounds yeah. like him. <laughs> it sounds like Jeff is just in the microphone doing that. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Oh, this song goes hard. God damn. It does actually. I'm telling you, this. The first time I heard this, I was like, yeah! Like fucking fist pumping <laughs> and everything because it's so damn good. <laughs> oh, this is music to throw tables to, man. Whoa. Corey, Will, you guys weren't there. This is spring break music. You guys, you guys weren't there when um when Kawhi Sprite showed up for, uh drunken Irish Appreciation Day and he was like, Yeah, I just I just shit out those songs yeah. in like a day. I didn't spend that much time on them and now they're like iconic. And I'm not talking about Ugg, but I'm talking about the original oh, I OST. About that. 
And it, he's yeah. like, yeah, I, I don't believe in overthinking my music. I just put it out there. And it, it's wild how much talent that, that guy has. I mean, that you guy know, is yeah. a machine of specifically music. Specifically this music. It's like one of the it. first times I heard about him was when like ACOC was starting to cover them first. And even then he was putting out like a song a week or two songs a week. And he had like 80 songs in two months or something crazy like that. It, he was just a machine. I'm so, I'm so happy that guy's Working like, at Subway to working on a Newgrounds yeah. team. Quit his job for it. You notice a pattern though? Like a lot of the Newgrounds greats start at fucking sub shops. Who like else who? are you thinking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, isn't that where the whole premise of Sublo and Tangly Mustard came from? Oh, yeah, but that's no. <laughs> I, I don't. Th- I don't think so. Characters, Josh. I don't mean to burst your bubble. I, I don't <laughs> think. Not real. I don't think Aaron. I don't think Aaron ever worked at a subway shop, though. He did in spirit. In yeah. spirit. He did in spirit. <laughs> Will's true. Will's in a sub shop right now in spirit. That's right. <laughs> I'm in a subway. I am subway. I am in a subway. I am subway. I asked on, on Twitter, I was like, what do you think artists go when they're on hiatus? And then Pepperoni Ravioli was like, to Subway or, or like their their <laughs> job. I was like, oh. <laughs> they're, they're artists. They got to make money. <laughs> we all work at Subway, metaphorically speaking. I did kind of go the you know actor route, and I worked at Starbucks for two and a half years. So I do have that under my belt. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at Best Buy for one week. Art? Can I do what? Week? I made it a whole. I made a whole year at Best Buy. I'm better than you, Will. Dang. Well, yeah, no, I made it <laughs> Corey, one week. Corey, I was asking, can you do that fancy full mart with the coffee and shit? I can't do full mart, and and those who actually take the time to learn that, I give them major props because that you looks suck incredibly. You know what, Zin? <laughs> I what? sucked a lot to Will. get to where I am today. So you know what? What did you say? You just sucked a lot to get to where you are. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, he means that. I know it's the entertainment the industry, Zen. If you're not sucking the right people, you know you're not going to get anywhere in life. You this have guy's to got suck. A point. I don't know, man. I haven't really made it anywhere. <laughs> I think you're, you're not all sucking lines. enough, Zen. Yeah. You're not sucking enough. Suck harder. Damn it. Um, it, speaking of it, sucking it, dick and getting jobs, shout out to whoa, whoa who said Jack. anything about sucking dick? No, hold I on a second, about hold on a life. second. All right, whatever. <laughs> anyway, shout out to Milk Bar Jack for getting an internship where uh Josh works. Wait, seriously? Yeah, no? I'm dead serious. Nice, good for him. He, pl- he applied to Josh new grounds. He, he asked Tom for an uh, internship. Now, Milk Bar Jack uh has an internship at new grounds. He confirmed it today. So, Josh, can you, yeah. corrob- can you corroborate this? Big well, applause. Zinn kind of buried the lead. He said Josh works, and uh, this is news to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you're saying he Josh. has no job. But no, I actually good for was him. not privy to this information, but that's cool. Well, you will find out. Hopefully he, he annoys everyone. Well, he's just he's a game maker. Uh, I forgot what he told me his classes that he's taken to where he had to get an internship. And he might be like trying to make a game for new grounds or just hosting a jam or something. That'd yeah. be kind of cool. That would be amazing. I wonder so, if you yeah. could get him on. If you have, if like if he's here. No, he's not here. What, but maybe Jack? He could... No. Yeah. No, leave him alone. What? Okay. I'm just leave saying. Him alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, he's my intern now. So That's true. You have. Yeah. You can oh, do whatever you want. <laughs> well, he had, he has that option oh, of Tom fun. was like. Tom was like, do you want to come into the office or you just want to do this remotely? I thought it'd be sweet if you could go into the office and like hang out with the guys, and the boys. I thought that'd be cool. Dang, I'm going to have to reach out all day and let Jeff walk by you at all times. And he just goes, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be a th- that would be a thrilling experience. Really? Just Classic me. Jeff. And it's like, it's, it's like it's you not have as like. thrilling as you think it is. It actually makes you a little sad inside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Speaking from experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Will, yeah. go ahead. What has been up with you, man? I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. I know. It's been weird because, so, like, I'm getting a lot of kind of freelance work. So, I'm just suddenly busy doing the, that because, like, when it comes, it's a miracle. And it's like, like, you know, the rent is on the line. And I'm like, oh, I have something to do now. And then I also have this freaking kidney stone. Why is it still in me? Sorry, too much information. Uh, I thought you already passed that. No, it's still inside. It's right there. Wow. I'm pointing. Not oh, enough people Bastard. have prayed for you. No, apparently not. Guys, get on it. What are you doing? 
Yeah, pray no, for so Will's kidney stone. Pray for yeah. it. Pray for it. it really pray for it to pass. <laughs> you all have to clap. You all have to applaud at once. It's like Tinkerbell. If you believe, <laughs> if you believe, it'll come. <laughs> I've never <laughs> had one, but you can transfer yours to me. I'll take it. I'll take one for the team. You can transfer yours? I'll, we can yeah. just share. Like, per week, we'll just trade the same kidney stone amongst the hosts. Like, that's what is it means. To, is there a way to NFT a kidney stone? We could get, we get, <laughs> get rich off of Will's kidney stone. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Zen, I just have Not one question. Idea. How are you picturing this physical uh, transfer happening? Exactly. Um. I don't know, like, uh, we walk into, like, a weird, like, white room with a doctor in it. We both lay on a table, and we get put mm. under yeah. it, and then when we wake up, I have your kidney stone. Okay. I was expecting much more of a conscious, um, maybe tip-touching endeavor, but that's really touching. good. <laughs> you, you got a dock, and then it goes through one hole into the other. <laughs> tip-touching! That's right. Mom! You win or you out. Will <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing mostly because Zen lives with his mom. I do live with my mom, just oh. so you know. I moved out at 17. I gotta keep breaking this up so I can defend myself. All right, <laughs> yeah. I'm a big boy. You fake your time. Mom, we want the meatloaf. We want it now. Well, she tonight's pizza night. Actually, she texted me while I was at work. Yeah. She was like, she was like, tonight's pizza night. I'm like, oh, I'm like hell yeah. Pizza, do you want? You want a big sausage pizza? Me, actually, that's a big problem. Hold on. I'll be right back. My <laughs> <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> oh She my knows God. I'm doing a podcast where she'd open up the door and be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> well, I will slap the shit out of you. Yeehaw. Boy. All right. Enough about my mom. How are your moms? That's a good well. question. I'm oh, just kidding. This one is word. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> We're backtracking. Every, every time Zin brings up someone's parents, we have to edit the podcast. Let's, let's skip this. Nobody Wait, knows what you're our, talking about. What's our uh, what's our podcast about? Newgrounds. That's right. Uh, what you guys have any Newgrounds information? Well, I was going to ask. Yeah. So, like the real actual thing, I maybe would have talked about if we hadn't talked about PPs and kidney stones, which is what we do. But anyway, <laughs> I was going to ask about Pico Day. I mean, Josh, maybe. I mean, yeah. you're seeing some of the people getting excited about Pico Day, which is something they straight up couldn't have last year. So, or at least like uh, the live no, section of nope. it. I know that's still not happening. I, I'm not. I'm not seeing anybody excited about it at all. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see anybody, so that can. Be all, right. all right. All right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Read anybody. Um, well, it's it's not a physical Pico Day. You're talking about the no. art thing going on. I, know. Right? I think I think it's going to be an interesting Pico Day, though. Like just the amount of people that have rediscovered Pico and Tank Man through Friday Night Funkin'. Yes. Um, I I think people are starting to jump down the the Newgrounds history rabbit hole. Like all these newcomers, and I think a lot of them are inspired by you know classic Pico Day submissions, classic submissions. Um, things like that. So I, I don't know. I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen. I have no idea what it's going to look like at all. Yeah. But yeah, th this crowd that's so into Pico and Tank Man and shit, like we were saying, um, they're going to do stuff that we haven't seen probably. Well, um, let's just no let's way just... we're not getting like actual Pico gay porn submissions this year. No way. <laughs> what, we gotta get that. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Well, it's just happen. think, last year the prizes were only for, uh, what is it, only for art, right? Wasn't that it? Like, they, they stopped doing right? prizes for animation. I think one animation was made in lieu of Pico Day by Destructin, and that won a prize, maybe, or just an honorable mention. And I, I'm fairly certain it's because um, Tom was worried that Pico Day was falling out of, like, everyone's recognition. He kept, you know people would ask who's pico who's pico this and it, it was just wasn't relevant anymore so he was thinking about changing the name to like tank day mm -hmm. or well more, more like what that. he wanted to do was like pico and stuff is like old school like it is it's definitely part of newgrounds history but yeah yeah he want he, he never wanted it to be about the newgrounds original characters what he wanted he wanted to change it to a newgrounds day where yeah. we celebrate everything on newgrounds everything that's popular and you know, we've had, it's popped up on Pico days, but everybody always goes back to the Pico well, the old school characters and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but this year, I think might be a little different. I think you might be looking forward to it this year, <laughs> seeing all those old characters through new eyes. I know I am for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be. Oh it's yeah. Gonna be fun. 
I mean, I know it's that just, look, I'm as respectful of history and a fan of things as the next guy, but I, I kind of think I'm a fan of a new grounds day. I still yeah. think it should be, yeah. Like that's, I don't know, yeah, man. Moving the date and everything. Celebration. Like, the whole the whole day is actually centered around Tom's birthday, and I know we talked a lot. Like, if we want to move it to a different event name, we're, we probably want to make a new day too, where it can be. The, I don't know, maybe when day. people aren't in school or aren't <laughs> working, or not Mother's Day weekend. You know, mm, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> so making people choose know, between man. you guys and mom. But yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of pushback against getting rid of Pico Day, but I don't know. I think we can have Pico Day as just like a day where people submit if they want to, you know, do old Pico animations. Yeah. But I think the big day would should definitely be like a, a, an all new grounds day. Like let's you know yeah. show us all your new ground stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe the day new grounds was like put online or something, Tom could have like the date that it became live or the date that the first content was submitted or something like Newgrounds taught, you know, something like that, like an anniversary of something. Yeah. The first Newgrounds podcast episode. No. There you go. That was, <laughs> wait, hold on. That was February. Yeah. I we're think. like over, a little over a year old at this point. Yeah. Let's throw a big, big party in the middle of the winter. Let's do something like that. <laughs> well, I'm excited for Pico uh, Day this when, year. I think a lot of good shit's going to come out too. I like Pico Day. So don't change it to fucking Tank Day anymore. No, I like Pico Day because it resembles how far we've come. Well, how far Newgrounds has come. And then it's also related to Pico shooting up a school. So it's kind of cool. He didn't shoot up <laughs> yeah. a school. Gangster. It was other kids yeah, shooting up a school. He right, saved some, the school. Yeah, but some ricochets hit the building. This technically counts. There's I think. no way there was no collateral damage. Pico definitely yeah. somebody. Can't. <laughs> Are we going to go Damn. one episode without talking about a school shooting of some kind? I feel like we're <laughs> no. starting to fall into a pattern here. Well, I'm, look, I'm gone for on a school shooting. I'm gone for one month, and that's all anybody can talk about. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you weren't here to supervise, so, you know, we did our, our thing. We improvised. Right. and we did uh, our best, Will. That's all you can ask. <laughs> that's right. We reached, we reached deep down inside, and we found out that we're <laughs> really fucking horrible people. <laughs> So anyway, I what's going to happen very far, but... <laughs> the, um, for, for the last part of this episode in a little bit, I do have a segment that I want to play for guys. Uh, there's a, an artist I've become a fan of recently named Kyle John Kanowski, who is a kind of folk singer and animator. And I got to talk to him about a animation w based on a music he did that actually got into an Adult Swim Shorts Fest. He got a really big, cool thing out of it. He's a cool musician, so I'll be ha I'll have that for the end. But I, I did wonder if you guys wanted to hit up some of the things that Nick said uh, for us to do this episode. He gave us like good suggestions of what to do today, which is kind of fun. Yes, yes, yes. I really want to make out with you guys. I really want to make out. With you guys. <laughs> that was the last one. Oh, that was wow. the last one he said. Should that should be, <laughs> should be the first one. That should be the first one. I mean, Zen, if you want to get the kidneys down, that might be the second best way to do it. So, I'm. <laughs> do you want it as a suppository or? <laughs> I'm actually speechless. Oh. <laughs> wow, we did it! We did it! Woo! <laughs> oh man, uh, what does Nick say we should do? He's yeah. not even a patron. Why the fuck do we care? Where the patron questions at? Because yeah. Nick Senny is the fucking man. He's a great guy. One of the questions Nick asks is like, and I don't think we have to go too like like emo on this but it's still fun to talk about compare your younger <laughs> self to yourself today what do you feel has changed the most significantly about you <laughs> that's kind of a it could be a self-motivational question or it could be just like a i guess oh i discovered i was allergic to cheese i've been spending a lot of my life with indigestion yeah. <laughs> like yeah. given how how old i am this could be an entire episode so I'll oh just, man I'll just, I'll just take the cheap answer and say uh well when I was young, I was young, and now um, I had to have my wife pull a weird black hair that was growing out of my back. Ooh. <laughs> what the fuck? I know, right? I'm not, I don't even have black hair. No. It's, it's really <laughs> I, don't, I don't know oh, why it was God. black, but it, yeah, it was just growing out of, like, out of the left fucking lower half of my back. It's not even like the upper back where most people get back hair. It's just right down... Like <laughs> ten inches above my fucking ass. Just a random oh, ass body hair. Above my ass. Yeah. <laughs> when she pulled it, did you start to say pre-recorded phrases? Yeah. <laughs> There's a snake in my boot. 
Somebody's poisoning the water hole. <laughs> could be worse. Could have been a kidney stone. You know. <laughs> you know, it uh, could have been hit. the pin for a kidney stone grenade. I could be dead any minute now. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> She pulled your pain. You just exploded after she pulled that fucking hair. <laughs> Zen, you've talked about being a, a, a big, a, an adult man, a big boy in the episode. What were you like as a kid? Oh, oh God, me as a kid. Oh, I hated myself as a kid. How do we, how do we describe young Zen? Um, depressed as shit. Big crybaby. I used to cry over everything. Like, I used to cry over a lot. Like one time in second grade, I remember this clearly. The teacher passed out tests. Like we we're taking a quiz. Quiz to everyone but me. I was the only one that, that didn't get a piece of paper. I just sat there fucking crying my eyes out because I didn't get a fucking quiz. <laughs> and it's, and I used to, and then as I grew up, I like. I like I got I used to have like this anger issue thing too. So like I was depressed. Like I had friends. Don't get me wrong, I had friends, but I always wanted to fight people and I was always mopey. Dang. And it and like I was funny. Like I was bipolar, man. Yeah. <laughs> basically. So yeah, me as a kid was like really all over the place. <laughs> and I had I had trouble like figuring out like who I was. Yeah. You know. So I guess the best thing that's changed about me is like I got a like more focused mentality and i i'm calmer now and i don't know i know how to have fun yeah go ahead Corey. what do you what were you like as a kid you fucking old man you have a kid now <laughs> i remember uh, when old. i was a seven year old i got one of the things about me when i was younger um i was more so shy um i did get picked on a lot so it kind of closed me off and uh did make me reserve um, it wasn't until like, you know, towards the end of high school and once I got into college that I started, you know, being more open and trying to talk to more people and it just changed my personality altogether, you know, being shy and closed off. I did kind of see things from a pessimistic way, like just didn't really want to take any chances and, you know, just be the shy guy. You know, yeah. but like once once I got to college and started, you know, opening up and expressing myself a different way, you know, a more positive side of me started coming out more happier, zany, you know, comedic type person, not, not even like comedic, just, you know, oh, just overabundant joy and happiness starting to come out of me. So I, I, you know, in essence of that, I try to be as positive as I can be uh, on a daily basis. And I try to share that positivity with everybody, you know, I converse with. And I think you guys have, have noticed that. And that's one thing that people tell me all the, all the time, like, damn, do you like, you seem like you're extremely happy all the time. Like, why <laughs> yeah. is that? I'm like, I, I just try to be optimistic and I try medication. to medication. <laughs> I am heavily medicated and I'm extremely yeah, happy. Yeah, but I respect <laughs> the crap out of that. You, you find reasons yeah. for positivity and you bring positivity. I think that's cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I Corey. Don't, I, yeah. Today, today, someone mistook you for. Uh, I was looking in the YouTube comments. Someone mistook you as Corey from Sleepy Cabin, and they're like, "Damn, I, I respect you so much <laughs> not more now, Corey, that I know you." <laughs> I was like, "What the? Fuck? Uh, shit, oh, okay. uh, Corey from Sleepy Cabin. I could play uh, trombone. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can uh, draw. I don't know if that sounds like NSFW. <laughs> <laughs> You're my best friend now." <laughs> Oh, I'll draw something for you said I will. Yeah, I'll Corey, ever since I met you, dude, most positive dude I've ever fucking met. You, uh, Yeah. Corey, I, when he, when you were younger, were you just, like, really fucking, like, mean? You just really no, mean? No, th that wasn't the thing. Like, um, I was kind of dorky looking uh, throughout my adolescence. So I You got still are. But yeah, but I'm thing. less dorky now. I'm less dorky now, and I'm proud of it. There's nothing wrong with <laughs> Who being Who tells dorky? you that? <laughs> Who gives you but, that confidence? <laughs> I, you know Your what? Mom I, I must really was... love you. No, <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> she said, no, we're back in the mom track. Open it up, Corey. Tell us. Tell us everything. Yeah. No, you, you no. know what? My one of the coolest things, especially since going into my voice acting career, is just seeing the love and and support from my family. You know, starting out, uh, I figured nobody would want to support me. You know, they think, oh, you do voices. This is fucking stupid. <laughs> but my mom and my dad have been extremely supportive and they always ask about, you know, what I've auditioned for, what I'm what I've been in. They want to see, they want to listen, they want to hear all the stuff that I've been in, which is really cool. So, you know, having, you know, having that positivity being, you know, aimed at my career has, you know, put more positivity in myself 
that I can actually do this for a living. So, you know, the more positivity that I try to put out there, you know, it only makes me more more happy. And I try to do that on a daily basis. So that's why you see me being, you know, a bright light and in, in an essence, if anything, just trying to be a bright light for for somebody who's potentially having a bad day. You know, I've actually had times where I've talked to somebody and they're having a bad day and they, you know, they tell me like, man, thank, thank you for being, you know, positive and talking to me this way because you know you're actually making me feel better so it, oh. it, it's nice being that, making me that type of person that's hey. great Ugh. yeah you're making us all better <laughs> oh. people Ugh. it's weird oh. Ugh. It's, Ugh. it's different from oh. when you were little you used to just stab people oh. in the stomach when they came to you with problems <laughs> that's right so it's good Don't to see you grown bitch <laughs> well dude what were you like man you're probably the same i'm probably very similar <laughs> i know it's like we kind of all have the same starting point i wasn't like angry but i was kind of like i don't know lonely and a little lost and big into the projects i would give myself except back then it wasn't newgrounds podcast or a cool game or something it was like i don't know drawing somebody in ms paint and failing but it was still like the project mind i would want to stay in my room and like make stuff so i guess it's part of why we're here but and then also i was like um what is it like very afraid to do anything or really say anything or upset anybody. And I noticed that about myself. And at a certain point as a teenager, I like did a horrible turnaround and like tried to just say whatever shit came to mind and like be filterless. And <laughs> that was a lot worse, actually. That was probably wow. not a good move. <laughs> yeah. I just we are kind the of like, same, Will. You ever, th- you ever look in the mirror and think, man, I'm Zen. You ever think that? Sometimes. I mean, we're all in yeah. some essence. Man. I was, because when I was younger, I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings either. And then I got sick of being that way. And I was like, I'll just say whatever the fuck yeah. like, I, I want. Like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, he's the weird guy who says things that make us all uncomfortable. And you're like, wait, no, I was just trying to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> go one way or the other. That's, yeah. There you go. Um, there you go. All right, next, next. We probably got to go through these questions a little bit faster. You got no. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of did a big old thing of uh, what were we like as Back kids on the, the New Guns podcast where you get to know chat, all, chat, chat. all your inner secrets. Every single chat. one of them. Chat, what were you guys like as kids? Go, hurry up, go. <laughs> yeah. quick. The entire quick, chat. Quick, quick. And we're going to read every single one of your answers in the utmost uh, detail. Princess Puber was a homo. Not all of them. Oh, okay. Not, gonna, not, not all of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> ba- ba- bacon <laughs> was late. a hello zin. Uh, yeah. Spectrally the same but fucking stupid. Verbank, uh, why are you gay? Yeah. Wait, that's not. No, LBG, LBG, uh, LBG, LBG is again. deaf. He can't hear. LBG and says, "Ask again." This is a bad idea. Deaf. This isn't going the same way we thought it would. Wait, no. Carlson Chu, shy but also not at the worst times. That's a confusing. Shy, sentence, no, he's I like agree. shy, but also when it. Re- when Real Mister Struggles shy, you're not. says Jackbox oh. now. So okay. Well, these guys are great. Thanks, guys. That's good. I smelled of cum. All right. We're, all right, good. Steve. we're good. We're good. I think at one point we all did, actually. If you really think about it, when we were real young, we were all Okay. Just... Real talk, okay. real quick. Real talk, real quick. What was the condition of your bed sheets during puberty? Go. <laughs> what do you mean? I didn't... Uh, uh... <laughs> You, what? What do you mean? Like, uh, you, see, look, he's trying to dodge the question. No, I had, a, I had a, des- a desktop with one computer in the house. I didn't need to like be my bed. All right, yeah, let's move on. Let's do a different question now. Yeah, um, that would be nice. The answer, by the way, for me was bad, but we'll go on. We can go on. Crusty, just, I just could not answer. Um, Nick also asked a question that is two parts, and I think both of them are interesting by themselves. Do you think people are intrinsically good? And number two, if so, when do you think you've been a bit of a bad boy? And can you provide examples? Bad boy. He did a bad boy in italics, so I tried to say it in italics. Blackmail material. I know. He's trying to get blackmail material. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. At one time, Josh... uh deleted ninja muffins account he was being really bad he was like i'm a, <laughs> I'm a bad, bad boy it's evil well i knew we what never... he was going to become and i tried to stop him i was trying to save the future but <laughs> try to save the future <laughs> you, you, you can't stop the future <laughs> Should have all right all right all right all right all right are people intrinsically good well you're gonna say yes yes well, i, would I say am people I'm are say good. born yeah. good people but you know, certain mental illnesses and stuff can cause them to just be like completely awful. Yes. Um, I don't know that it's a, it's necessarily a choice in that case. Uh, but environment is probably the number one thing that turns people bad. So I think people 
yeah. are born good. But that's not to say that every bad person is redeemable. Like some people just, you know, they, they absorb badness for so long and they're never going to change. They're toxic forever. Like, so yeah, I think people are born good, but I don't think that anybody's necessarily redeemable. Just that's my two cents. <laughs> yeah. Drink more. Yeah, um, know. have you have you read Lord of the Flies? We're fucking evil people. We just fucking Sucks we revert to tribal effects. Like <laughs> when we were left alone to our own devices, That's trapped true. in a cave. Like someone's just gonna beat someone over the head with a rock and then eat them just because. Yeah, like I get. <laughs> I, the I brain just I is know. the most succulent part of the human body. I hear. The brain is the most succulent. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but does them beating your brain really, uh, is that a bad, maybe you're a bad person and they just saved the whole like village or something, you know? It's like, well, if, you a, if you have a time machine, do you go back and eat baby Hitler's brain? <laughs> Obviously. Um, no. <laughs> that's I don't, an wait, easy that's question. Too, that's, that's too deep of a question. Hold on. No, but that would change the course of history. Like, what if a different world war came out of that? Like, other than the one we went through. Like, well, actually, if no world war happened, the world would be totally different. We wouldn't have put as much money into our military development. We probably wouldn't have the internet right yet. Fuck, dude. What if we didn't have new grounds? Because no. because I wouldn't Hitler be here. didn't exist. If, Tom Fult would be like exist. a fucking farmer. Right no now. internet. <laughs> Tom Fult will be just like a a, a farmer in some. I don't know where I was going with this. Yeah, he'll be a farmer. <laughs> I don't know you're in Pasadena. I don't find I tried. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> Someone help me. Uh, farmers, where no. do we live? <laughs> he'll be All a farmer farms. in uh, Mex- Cal- Canada. Um, Mexi- Mexanada. <laughs> where were you guys? You're in Idaho. Oh. When were you guys bad boys? Bad boys, what you going to do? When were you guys bad boys? I have never been a bad boy. I still I've came to the gas station once. But I've never been a bad boy. No, Josh, bad, Josh boy, had bad, boy, <laughs> bad boy in quotes implies that, you know, I, I I was like always on the outskirts of, you know, the rules and, you know, yeah. and I'm the kind of guy the girls like. That's not me. I don't know. No. Yeah, like the leather jacket kind of smoking with a motorcycle kind of bad boy. Yeah, I, I've never, I've never hey. been that kind of bad boy. <laughs> now, I have been a bad boy. Okay. But I've never been a bad boy. I'm trying to picture you with a leather jacket and a cigarette and the aviators and a motorcycle. It's a pretty it's good obvious. look. Have you considered it? Yeah, I can also good? see him with a bottle of Jameson in his hand too. That's the right. thing for is, reason. okay, here's the problem. <laughs> I, I, are, I already have like peak sexiness. If I was a bad boy too, you know how much work it would be just to like keep my wife from murdering every woman that hit on me? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Being a programmer for Newgrounds is hard, man. Yeah, um, I, I have. To, I, I'm basically yeah. I could be Superman, but I have to be Clark Kent just to keep everything safe. That's right. <laughs> you start a world Corey, war by yourself. Just Corey by being doesn't do his taxes. taxes. What? Yeah. Corey doesn't do his taxes. What? Yeah, we heard you do your taxes. taxes. That that is a bold faced lie. I do my taxes every year. If there's a sign yeah, that but- says "Don't walk on the grass," Corey fucking walks on it and he rolls in the grass. It's it's weird. <laughs> Bro, you want to know my biggest bad boy moment? Yes. When I was six years old, I stole Spider-Man stickers from an Albertsons. You <laughs> fucked okay, up, it, motherfucker. Dang, if we're serious. talking theft, I, I was I was a bad kid when it comes to theft and shit. Okay, I used to I was a klepto. I would steal candy bars from any fucking general store. Wow. Walk in. I used to fucking. My my biggest wow. heist was stealing a Commodore sixty four game from the electronics section of. A oh, that's real game. shit. That's not that's not dumb. Yeah. That's wow. not real. No, the the box was like wow. ten inches tall. Like you know how hard it is to get that out. <laughs> I, I, I'm the reason. I'm the reason they started putting those little beeper tags in that shit. <laughs> Specifically, wow. you. we don't want. Never got caught in. either. Never got caught. Never got caught. I wow. stole something when Until I was six now. years old. It was a dog bone from like. <laughs> From like a store, and I hit it. And then when I got in the car, my mom was like, "Where'd you get that from? And did you steal that?" And I started crying. Remember how I told you I used to cry a lot? Of yeah, yeah, that's a call. And I never, I never stole anything ever again. It was just a dog bone. That was my, that was my streak. Did you have a dog at the time? Like, was there a point for the? Uh... Yeah, there was, I had a dog. I wanted to give my dog a, a bone, and it's. I just fucking picked it up, and I he forgot to tell long. my mom. And then, well, I forgot to tell my mom I had it, and then you know. They, they, I so you didn't even it. mean to steal it. You just no, it. but I did that. <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, I just wanted it for myself. You know, 
<laughs> just wanted to gnaw yeah. on it. Yeah, I just, just wanted to, just wanted to gnaw on, on it. <laughs> that was that was my biggest bet. <laughs> I used to sneak out a lot as a kid. I used to sneak out a lot as a kid. I used to, I used to do that too. God damn it, I guess I was a Wait, I didn't ah! I did that a little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't go outside <laughs> far though. I go to like my backyard and try to camp. Wow, I walked two miles to see you, chick, and oh, I, wow. like that was fun. Like we went into her backyard; they had a tent set up, and it was like four chicks. Me and my boys showed up like two in the morning. Like we walked two miles. I I ended up getting poison ivy on the back of my neck <laughs> the next day. <laughs> so <Worth> uh, karma. <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay, we we used to do this thing where we'd sneak out at night, and the whole point of going out was just to like travel through people's backyards it was kind of like our version of parkour i guess with like hot yes. places and bushes oh. and you just you would just yeah. go through everybody's fucking backyards and just stay up for like hours doing that shit and bro you find you find the guy with the light sensor and you'd be like dun 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 getting around the light <laughs> sensor that's sending it off okay that shit was fun and it was bad but you know bro. it, it it's not bad. One time, bad. It was just bad. One time, me and my best friend, we used to call it backyard hopping. We went into yeah, this yeah, one yeah. dude's backyard late at night. It's like midnight. We hopped on his trampoline, and then he he walks in the window, and, and we, we hop on his shed, and we're just laying there. Like, we didn't want to get caught. <laughs> and then we're like, dude, we got to go. He's fucking... He comes out, and he's like looking through his garage and shit, thinking we stole something. And then me and him are looking... Me and my best friend looking at each other we're like we gotta go dude we gotta hop this fence we hop the fence and then this dude just starts hopping the fence and chasing us down while we're running down the street. <laughs> oh, no. and then for the rest of the night we would duck through backyards and like look out for the police and shit there's yeah. like this truck that was circling the block and it was it was crazy well, that was fun, more man. thrilling than running away from the cops when you're like 13 years old yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> the news i don't even know for really... sure if they're chasing you but you, in your head you're like they're after me <laughs> you know what? I I do have a friend who actually got caught by the cops when he was in middle school. Uh, it's actually kind of creepy because he was he was such uh he had such a bad time in middle school. He was actually gonna burn down the school. Oh shit! Like no Whoa. joke. Wait, that was your uh, friend. That was your friend at the time. Yes. <laughs> and that uh, sucks a lot. Was he, he into he prodigy me, at all? <laughs> no, but he got caught, and the police came and like they had him cornered. And he, no joke, used the that pivotal catchphrase, you'll never take me alive, coppers, as he oh, tries no. to run and slide underneath their legs. And they just grabbed him and they handcuffed him. Yeah, the okay, good. <laughs> but, but that was like, that was so great. He's like, he really said, you'll never take me alive, coppers. <laughs> yeah, he really said it. He just wanted to say, he knew 10 years from then he'd be telling the story. He wanted to have a fun ending to the story. Exactly. And not just talk about how he tried to burn his school down like an idiot. <laughs> you know. <laughs> tried to distract people. All right, Will, what was your biggest bad boy motherfucking moment? Like, hide your face, hide your kids, hide your oh, wife. Shit. You're in jail. <laughs> uh, your parents no longer want to talk to you. Um, um, there's, <laughs> there's a dead body. You can't tell people where it's stashed at because Pablo will get mad. He'll find out, man. He'll kill your whole family. You know what I'm saying? What was your yeah, worst bad one? boy it, moment? It, That's funny. God, I don't Talk, want to start. We're talking trench coats. We're talking Unabomber. We're talking <laughs> sitting on the subway, jerking off. Nobody's noticing. You know what I mean? <laughs> the pizza box is just on top of you, wobbling around. They they can't tell. God. No, you plan 9 11? <laughs> I don't yeah, want to start the it. story because I, I know we have a thing to play and I don't want to take out the rest of the show, but it is cool. Just I, do no, it. Okay. Do it. I have actually I have actually been to jail one time, which would be surprising Whoa! To you Whoa! if you know me or know what I look like. <laughs> But I did. <laughs> Wait, know what you look like? Um, or, yeah. Did just you a, hide in a corner all night? I kind of did. I kind of did. <laughs> I don't blame you, Will. <laughs> so I would too. <laughs> yeah. So there was a, like, long story short of this part is I was, like, on the beach with some friends, and we were all drunk, and they left me and a friend who wasn't from America, uh, basically just the two of us. And it was my car, and I was too drunk to drive. And so they said, do you want me to drive? And I was like, Bleh. And so we got in the car, and I probably fell asleep. And I woke up, and there were like six cars worth of lights behind me. And I was like, uh, hey, do you want to pull over? And they were like, what do you mean? And I was like, there's police behind us. And they are like, so? And I was like, you pull over. The police, you pull over for them. And he was like, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and you guys are on like a big chase for cool. how <laughs> yeah. long. No, 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 no. Okay, so we stop the, the the car stops. A police car jackknifes in front of us and stops us and blocks us. 
and four other police cars, I swear, pull up behind us. And I'm like seriously just waking up out of a nap and like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> so we both, yeah, the police come out and they all question us and they figure out I'm drunk and whatever. They put us in a van and they arrest us. They arrest us for that. They make me do the thing where I get out and I have to spread my legs and then they put yeah. my arms behind my and back. <laughs> Corey, you're getting too excited, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Not that? Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and they put the handcuffs on and they put us in a van and they take us to jail. And I basically spend like a whole day and a half in jail waiting for things to happen. Uh, like <laughs> someone to help. And it was weird. It was boring. And um, I swear, like, there was one guy who was very nice to me in there and he was like, kind of a skinhead, like he had the shaved head and a lot of like facial tattoos and like was kind of had all that going on. And he was the nicest guy. It really makes you think. But <laughs> really makes you think. It really makes you think. Um, and yeah. Not everyone in jail is, is mean. <laughs> the food in there was horrible. It was really bad, actually. They gave us a hamburger that was like kind of just completely bone dry. That was probably the worst part. It changed Will for the better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I came out an yeah. older, older, wiser. We have to start doing. Uh, we have to do background checks from now on. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I trust Will as much anymore. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. I mean, I've been to jail. I'm a bad guy. Well, I, I went to jail when I was 16, but I don't want. I don't want to say why. Yeah, that's, so I, I mean, if it's not a fun story, it doesn't need to be. Mine's just. I can. No, it's a fun story. <laughs> it's just it involves some incriminating <laughs> evidence. Okay, cool. So next time we do a non-recorded show. Yeah, you know sure. What you're yeah, we'll do a like non-recorded show. Zin, we'll, Zin's art event, he's just going to lay it all on the table. We'll put everything out <laughs> the there. confessional. I'll make it a three-hour story so people fall asleep during it. <laughs> uh, every second of it. All right, next question. Yeah. Oh, we're never going to get through today. Well, I think we should probably say for now, thank you, Nick, for those amazing things. And he put a, he put more yeah. in there and, like... Hey, guys, if you enjoyed us just, like, talking and bullshitting like this and telling stories, like, tell us and we might do more of it. And if you want to, we'll say, what's, give us some questions. Put the questions in there. It's kind of fun to do. And, uh, you know, if you didn't like the story segment, then don't, don't do that. But so, Wait, hold so on. Here's a, here's, a, here's a quick idea, and it's not my idea. Somebody brought it up, God, months ago. Um, maybe we should do a little series where we interview each other, and then they can get these questions in. We'll just, you know, we focus on one person at a time. and We'll get these people's questions in here and get, get to finally find out why Zen went to jail. That's no, good. But yes. um, instead of that, let's interview the audience. <laughs> let's do that. Interview the audience. Yeah, yeah audience, why not? Do why don't we interview? bring on someone? Oh, wait, wait. Don't we interview people already? Yeah. <laughs> wait, <hold on>. We're <laughs> just doing the show. The oh, we're just, we got oh. fooled into doing the show. Um, <laughs> fuck you guys. Yeah, I did I interview this guy. Mrs. Goldfish. You guys want to interview Mrs. Goldfish? She's shaking her head no. No. She's shaking, shaking, her, head shaking head no. her head no. That means no. That means no. That means no. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad. It's been an hour. I keep Should we close the show? I well, um, we do have we do have a uh, little clip that uh, Will put together that we oh, yeah. actually want to share with everybody. Yeah. So we yeah. definitely I, want to get that well, in there. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, ooh, ooh, I have something. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, I have something. Yeah, no, you can't let Zin take over the show or it just Yeah. Ends. Yeah. Will's Will's got a clip <laughs> in a gun and he's <laughs> I have a clip and I'm not afraid to use and it. And he's going to jail again. <laughs> so yeah. looking like he looks. <laughs> yeah. That's how I look. <laughs> I guess what I meant by that was friendly <laughs> it's just like too nice and possibly <laughs> physically weak to do anything dangerous but anyway yeah so like i was saying earlier this is an interview i got to do with a guy named kyle john kanowski he is an animator and a musician and when i say musician like he's kind of a folk guitarist and singer in an awesome way and the animations he makes are sometimes trippy sometimes abstract i'm a big fan of this guy so I'm going to play this interview I got to do with him a little while ago. And by a little while, I mean February-ish. It's been a while. It's been too long. And I do want to say that we did that classic freaking thing in interviews where you start talking and about 10 minutes in, you realize something's not going on and like something's not working and you have to restart it. So I think the first <laughs> thing you hear in this interview is me going like, okay, we're back. So I was talking to you about this and let's get caught up. <laughs> so if you hear that, that's why. But it was a fun interview. This is about 20 minutes long, so just so you know. About a 20-minute long thing. But, uh, yeah, we're going to play this clip. And then uh, 
yeah, we're going to probably call it a night after the clip because it's a fun clip, but it's a little bit long. All right. So, uh, so you ready? Here it goes. So where we picked off was just basically that we talked about music and animation and we just said that you, uh, you know, like to do animation to support the music and started talking about something you just recently made called the uh, Themes Without Variations. That's It's not recent. I, I started that. Um, I released that in 2017, but that's, that's the project that got me into visual arts. It, it wasn't planned out. It was just like, I guess I need to learn how to do some visuals just to make this project complete. And then, mm -hmm. and then I started to really enjoy it. I mean, I, okay. I just saw it because it came out on uh, Newgrounds just a couple days ago, right? And maybe just yep. decided to throw it on there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I haven't been doing Newgrounds for very long at all. Only a couple months. What got you into the site? Did you just um, see it and thought it was another place to put the stuff? Well, somebody uh, commented on a YouTube video I put out and they were like, you should really put this on Newgrounds cause they like animation over there. And I figured why not? They were right. <laughs> yeah. I would say like for a kind of music video animator who does their own music, Newgrounds is one of the perfect places for it because it's yeah. a really good place for animation, also a really good place for newer people starting out and building a community a little bit because the users there tend to be a lot more direct, a lot more feedbacky and supportive. Some yeah, people say yeah, like a, a follow on Newgrounds is like 10 followers on Twitter. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really niche, um, at least from what I can tell. I, and obviously I've known about Newgrounds for a long, long time. I used to go on and, I don't know, like watch Flash animations, but I didn't even realize it was still like a growing community. It's kind of always growing and also it's always the same community at the same time. It's funny. It's like you'll see the same mainstays who've been there for 20 years, but you'll also see people discovering it for the first time even today and they just kind of blend together. It's fun like mm -hmm. that. But yeah. so you, okay. You said that you started to get into art for the themes of the variations project, but it was good art. What you have an art background beyond that, I'm guessing, or just music, really. And I mean, I suppose I've always like, you know, when I was in school, I doodled in the ledger. I'm just a fan of art generally. Mm -hmm. So I so I like to find stuff that I think, you know, looks and sounds interesting like anybody. <laughs> um, I but mean, I, for but no, no, no formal training in uh, animation or anything like that. That's wild. Because honestly, for what it is and for how recently you started it, it's good. It looks like you're an animator who has enjoyed animation and music together for a long time, especially with what you went to do on when you went on to do after that. Like what we call called trust warming, which we'll talk trust about warming. for sure. That's the yeah. big one. That's the big cheese <laughs> and <laughs> the other things you've done. So when you were doing this, I mean, you maybe discovered a talent that you had within yourself you didn't know about. If and that's up for other people to say. I mean, I, I like doing it. And I, I, when, if I release a project, it's because I think, oh, this doesn't, this isn't horrible by my, to my taste, but we'll see. <laughs> You're humble. But so, okay. But where did, I'm going to ask you, where did the style come from? Because you start animating to do something along with music, but you get this psychedelic rough around the edges, high contrast color vibe. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Is it just experimenting and saying that looks good? Or was there something you were uh, inspired yeah. by? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, just intuition. And I suppose um, actually one, now that I think back on it, one thing that actually convinced me like, oh, you can, like, I didn't even realize until sort of maybe 2015 that there was a whole indie animation scene on the internet. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've all seen like Disney movies and stuff like that, but it just always seemed like animation, like if you're really going to do that, you need to like, you know, study for a long time. And but I saw this music video called the, it's actually called the music scene. Uh, it's a song by Blockhead, I think. And then this guy, Anthony Francisco Shepard, animated mm. it. I don't, uh, if you haven't seen it, the music scene, it's it's unbelievably good. <laughs> and okay. and but it's also in this very like yeah, as you said like rough around the edges style and it's it's like oh you can just like turn a sketchy aesthetic into animation and it really inspired me to like oh i i could probably do some I, like i'm not going to be as good as this guy but i could probably do something that me that music video is a huge influence on just like it was seminal in my pursuit of animation just to yeah. see that it could be done, you know? So you, you have the idea to do the animation, but it's not something you've done before. So maybe you just download Flash or a software and just start doodling and seeing where it goes. I ordered a really cheap, um, like Wacom tablet. 
one mm-hmm. that doesn't have a screen or anything. And it came with a free version of Autodesk Sketchbook. And then it ha- Autodesk has, has like a flipbook function in their sketchbook. And I just started trying things out, you know. I, I uh, suppose my approach to music and, and animation is, is basically just to like start doing it and something something if something emerges out of that that i like then i just pursue yeah. that organic it's just you you like an idea of doing something you do it and something interesting comes out of that and you follow it and you just follow the path until you're somewhere i love yeah. that it's not like you're trying to be anything that's where the true cre- uh, creativity comes from yeah uh trial and error it's a it's a big part of my process for sure and it, i think it should be for artists generally if if you're not comfortable I mean, I guess everyone everyone has their own process, but but I but I do think that it's a good way to find your style, your voice, just yeah. to be sort of like putting something down on the page, so to speak, and then and then just seeing like, oh, these are the things that I kind of like am proud of about about whatever came out of this, mm-hmm. and I'm going to I'm going to chase that. So, the music is the star of the show here. I think mm-hmm. maybe you think too. So let's pivot to that. Tell me about your music and where it comes from and what inspires you and uh, how you go about creating a song. How do I go about creating a song? That's a big question, isn't it? I threw one at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I started playing music in probably 2004, maybe, because okay. my friend, I was, uh, I was at a friend's house who was learning guitar, and I would pick up the guitar and just pluck the strings, not knowing at all what I was doing. And he looked at me at one point and said, Kyle, you don't have the coordination to play guitar. And I, <laughs> what I a supportive swear, friend. <laughs> am I allowed to swear on this? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was basically like, dude, fuck you. Yeah. So I went home. So hey, I went so, home hey and bud, started you don't got it. Hey, you're not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, like, I, you know, my mom made me take piano lessons earlier uh, yeah. in my life and I quit. And then I was, you know, at uh, in middle school, you had to pick choir or band so i started playing uh tenor saxophone but i didn't really like didn't really there was there was no passion for either of those projects and i think it's just because i don't like taking lessons for things it's it's not fun unless i'm like creating things myself but anyways i started started playing guitar and all of a sudden i felt like man i'm i'm actually like getting better than most of my friends that have been doing this for years I, i feel like i have some aptitude for it and and so i started Started doing that and then just never really stopped because it was always fun. I suppose the way, <laughs> that's where I started with music. The way the way I approach writing a song, it depends on the medium that I, that I start with mm-hmm. for every song. Like if I start with just like a melody in my head, I'll write a totally different song than if I start trying to sculpt a chord progression on guitar yeah. versus if I open up uh, Ableton and and open up a MIDI roll and start writing on on that. Each each one of those mediums will produce a different song. Mm-hmm. But I usually just kind of like start, and um, as soon as I sort of feel like a pattern is vibing with me, <laughs> I just kind of start to stack ideas on top of it, and then let certain ones fall away if they stop being interesting, and then and then eventually eventually a song is there. Of course, like we said. It's creativity. And yeah, okay, sure. so you're doing vocals too. So when you say you're doing like, you pl- you picked up a guitar and you mm-hmm. strummed it and he said, you suck and you said, fuck you. But then you got better just to spite him. Which yeah, I understand. out of spite. Out Total of spite, spite. For, your, your, for your bad friend. But yeah. the vocals, I mean, singing is an intimate thing that's very scary to do. I mean, is that something you were interested in too? Or did you just uh, have the guitar and you started singing along to it and it felt good? Just like you're saying, you chased it because it was interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, I I did not start off. I was definitely like better at guitar than I was at singing to start with. Mm-hmm. Uh, now now I feel like they're they're about on like I don't I don't lean on one or the other more. Because I'll say that you sing in a bold style. You don't sing like somebody who's being forced to sing just because they need vocals. Like you sound like you enjoy it. It's a freeing, it's a folky freeing sound, which I enjoy. I, I definitely enjoy it. When I started, I, you know, I mean, like, I don't know, I, as with anyone, when you when you start something out, it, you know, unless you just have that sort of like un, uninhibited 
gift for expressing yourself mm -hmm. through vocals. You, you, you do have to like learn and get better. I mean, I, I definitely started off with no range at all, but then as I pursued it, and it really, I think it comes out of the writing. Like in, in order to have an interesting melody for, for a song, I would have to like learn how to sing what I wrote, what I thought yeah. was interesting to write. And uh, yeah, it, it just just like guitar animation, just the pursuit of it is is what forced me to develop a style. So you did Themes Without Variations, which was an, kind of an abstract project. I I do think I want to talk about Trust Wormy for a good bit of this because that's how I found out about you. I would go. I would venture to say that's the most big, most eyeballs thing you've done so far. That's kind of your yeah. So let's go. Let's go deep on Trust Wormy. Is that all right? Yeah, for sure. Because um, I, I hope it's something you'd be excited to talk about. It's a very creative and interesting and wild ass adventure. It, and if you're listening to this, if you haven't seen it, go watch it either now or when you're done with this, depending on how up you are for being spoiled. I don't know. Is it like a reveal? <laughs> Whatever. No, no, you. I don't. I mean, I, I think like even when I when I started the project, I would try to explain to people like, OK, this is what's going to happen. Right. And, you know, they would nod, but it's not like you can't i mean so much of it is is just the aesthetic and that's something you have to experience in order to understand you know what i'm saying about it yeah um it started with the with the song obviously i um started recording this album in probably 2016 and it took me about two years to finish the album but the whole time i was i was telling everyone like okay so i'm going to record an album and then i'm going to make an uh animation for trust where me just because it's like one it's a short short song on the album relatively Two, i just think it's like a strong standalone track mm -hmm. um where, where a lot of a lot of the other ones i think are i'm very i'm very very proud of the album and all of the songs on it but that one just feels like oh you wouldn't you wouldn't need to like couch this within the context of the album to really like get it right away maybe i don't mm -hmm. know but also, also, I just had some imagery for it in my head. Like, I thought it would be interesting if I told, like, something like an Adam and Eve story through mm -hmm. the song. And then I started, once I finished the album in 2018, I started animating it. And I worked full time, so it's at a, at a just like a regular job. Oof, so, yep. So it, and, and obviously animation in general, but like hand-drawn, especially like, you know, 12 frames a second. That just takes an awfully long time. <laughs> yes. And so two years later, I finally finished it. And two years. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> First of all, uh, I'm curious. What do you do? What's your real life shackle? <laughs> I work at Whole Foods. Okay, that's fair. No, no, it's fine. It's a fine job. Yeah. Um, but but it's it a job. Be... It's a normal job. It's a normal. It's a grocery store. You're stocking. You're picking up stuff off of trucks and <laughs> i no i i cut fruit i i sit in the back and or stand in the back uh and i cut the cut the fruit that goes out on the wall you cut fruit mm -hmm. it's an honorable it's, profession no it's it's actually not that bad i don't i don't mind it for for being a job but obviously yeah. when you when you love uh art and you love like creating things it is it is a bummer to spend you know eight day uh eight hours a day, five days mm -hmm. a week, just sort of like doing something that. Right. It feels like you're just kind of like working for the weekend, but the creative version of working for the weekend is working for the evenings where you can make the art. Right. But what do you do? What do I do? I am well, I'm kind of between jobs due to COVID. Thanks, COVID. But <laughs> generally graphic designer and in a couple before COVID, I was actually working in escape rooms as a host, which is the person that puts them in and out and also helping design stuff. It's fun. So you, you're a 3D, um, you make like 3D models of, of, you know, skate parts for the game Skate. That's what you're saying, right? A little bit. Yeah. And just graphic design, just Photoshop. Nice. I, I'm working on something in part time right now. That's a lot of old paper documents that you find. So I'm making a lot of old paper documents in Photoshop. It's, it's just that sort of stuff. Just graphics. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of graphics, Trust Wormy has weird ass graphics. Where did that come from? There's hands. There's hands coming out of mouths. There's people turning into trees. I am. Um, What's going on, man? <laughs> man, because it because it takes so long to to make animation. I mean, like I 
made a lot of these decisions over a long period of time where I, I knew that, oh, I'm going to open it up and he's going to uh, come across a woman in the water and she's going to kiss him and give him an apple and he's going to eat it and he's going to look at it and say like what is going on inside of this apple yeah and then he's gonna freak out run away and then and then somehow like burst into a tree and then and then i realized <laughs> um this kind of reminds reminded me of the i don't know if you've ever seen the fountain by i think darren aronofsky mm. um guy that made like black swan and pie okay. um but i realized there's there's a very similar thing where where uh the main character is pursuing the tree of life and once he gets to it he i think like eats something from it and then and then all of a sudden like all these plants start bursting out of him so i was like i need to i need to find some way to distinguish the idea from that mm -hmm. and i thought it would be just interesting if it was hands instead like interesting and creepy and and kind of hard to explain and uh, very interesting and hard to draw so props to you for choosing a bunch of fully animated hands is what you turn people into <laughs> you have a, a big, big masochistic mistake, side but... of you <laughs> yeah um it it is hard and uh i don't even feel like i'm very good at it yet but you know keep working at it and i'll, I'll get better mm -hmm. um, so you put in the you put in the work for trust Wormy. it looks great two years in the making how does it get to Adult Swim? Because this was featured on Adult Swim Smalls, right? Mm -hmm. Which yep. isn't something um, I totally heard of. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, I guess I don't even remember how exactly I found it. I hesitate to say too much about how how it happened just because I don't want to involve anybody that doesn't want want to be talked about. Basically, yeah. I, I finished Trust Wormy. And I'm very, very proud of that project. But it is a long patient project to, to watch the whole thing you have to like actually sit down and be, and like commit to a weird work of art that kind of starts slow even, yeah. um, but i'm very proud of much of the content that's in it so i started um taking little excerpts out of it that i thought were like oh this is a very interesting part both visually and musically and i started sending it to the facebook page of a show on adult swim that i like Okay. Not really expecting anything. I just thought, you know, maybe there's someone behind that actually looks at these messages. Yeah. And if I just, you know, you know, I don't want to spam them, but if I just send send like one clip a week and just as as like a portfolio and just say like, hey, if anyone on the is on the other side of this reading these, um, I really love you guys' work, and I'm just trying to share share some art that I made with you. This is a and great a idea. I'm My mind is blown. So you went to the fan page of a show that you enjoyed and kind of like as a way to either get in with the show or maybe for other fans of the show to see you, you put stuff on the page like once a week. Well, I, I, I direct messaged the uh, the page. I didn't post it on their wall. Oh, or anything. OK. OK. Still good. Still good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you and found somebody that might be involved and you said, hey, check this out. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm still shocked that it uh worked but um i recommend it to other people if you guys if if anyone out there is like trying to if if you're proud of your work and you find some little community some little art project that you really like just uh i mean like send them some of your work and and maybe maybe someone will get back to you if eventually somebody did and it was actually the creator of the show what? and um and this person said, like, hey, I, I like this. Uh, I'm not going to use it, but I like it. So just like, here's my email and send me stuff uh, when you when you have stuff to, to send. And, said, and so I said, OK. <laughs> wow. and, and then two years and then like and then like a year and a half later, maybe I finally finished Trust Remy and sent it over with very little expectation, yeah, but got song. back to me and said like, hey, um, like we'd like to put ago. this out with our small That's series. Good. That's killer. Okay, so you started sending clips as you were working on Trust Wormy, just things you had here and there. Mm -hmm. So you weren't done, you were actually just pulling things like almost like dailies, like things that you'd made and, and getting interest so that when they said, hey, send me something, the time came you had something to send. Exactly, yep. That's a good ass plan. I'm like, taking notes here i hope people are too <laughs> that's really cool man yeah i mean if, if you think like oh i think i i fit in with this sort of like platform yeah like adults i love adult swim and they seem open-minded uh and and granted I, I there's not that many i guess to my knowledge there's not that many types of platforms like adult swim where it's like one it's like basically internationally it has international reach 
mm-hmm. I think. I mean, it's probably mostly America, but but I think I think people in Japan probably watch it too a little bit. Yeah. Anyways, uh, you know, and if you just send send people some of your work, then maybe eventually it catches an eye. And uh, and you know, I mean, it's it's not like getting trust for me on on the Adult Swim Smalls fixes my life forever or anything like that but um <laughs> right. but it's a start it, it definitely like you know the only reason i'm on this podcast is because is because it got on there and you saw it yeah absolutely and i mean you're talking about like communities like adult swim and content like adult swim i would say i think people agree newgrounds is one of the places where things like what would go in adult swim uh would mm-hmm. be championed in the internet yeah yeah well you are very humble i personally want you to be successful because i like your art so i hope other people see, you, the, man. see it the same way and uh keep on doing it i'm excited to see what else you got going on maybe you'll be back on the show at a certain point and uh yeah and uh thanks for having me on man you are absolutely welcome thank you for coming on That was his music, by the way. I literally just downloaded his album and put it in the background of the music with him. Uh, so that was his own stuff. Y'all like that? That was fun. Yes. But here's the worst part. I wish we could just have him on live and ask him about, like, you know what I mean? Like, actually, like, get deep into the Adult <laughs> Swim stuff. And like, Are you getting, like, anxiety? Like, oh, damn, he's not actually here. I can't ask him the cool things yeah, I want to ask. I get that. Sid yeah. has a hard time listening to people get interviewed when he's not interviewing. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. I've listened to a lot of our previous episodes, and they're really nice. Yeah. I enjoy them. I'm Ugh. a fair and biased person. I like hearing myself talk. Uh, only when the mic quality is good. Yeah, which is, is good it? tonight. Well, <laughs> you never know. You never know. I yeah. could have recorded an audacity off of my fucking headset like I did with the Hey OPC episode. And I just sound like I'm like in a tunnel or something. He sounds like, like you're on a walkie-talkie. Yeah. 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 That was so weird because you sounded just fine in Discord. It's so weird. Dang. It's because Discord uses my mic, but then Audacity was like, hey, I'll, I'll use your headset. I'm being helpful. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> well I hope you guys like that. Kyle John is awesome and he has a Patreon. So if you want to support him or if you want to support people in general, you should support him on his Patreon. He's it's getting, you know, it's getting kicked up. I think it's getting fun. So yeah, we should uh, probably wrap her up and let Zen go to bed, huh? No, I'm not yeah. that tired. I'm just dirty. I, I literally got right off of work, came right home. I was home at nine, <laughs> nine o'clock, booted up the old laptop. I'm covered in, in sawdust, <laughs> but it was a good day today. And I got tomorrow off, so it was fun. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, more hangouts? Fuck, man. Why? Where is our next big interview? Give me pictures of Spider-Man. Give me pictures of Psychic <laughs> Pebbles. <laughs> well, do it. Do it, too. <laughs> Oh, give me pictures of Cyclone Pebbles as Spider-Man. We know it's him. <laughs> I mean, before we go, yeah, I'll say that if you want big interviews, I haven't heard much about what we will be able to do this coming uh, this coming next week. But I've heard there's actually like a lot of serious good interviews. That's all I know about it. So it's going to probably be amazing. What? Wait, what? Is this I something know, I should so know? Wait, wait, what? All right. Thanks to our patrons. We have a lot of good patrons. <laughs> <laughs> Zen doesn't come to meetings sometimes. <laughs> I've been oh working. You guys kidding. had a meeting today without me? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, bud. I forgot anyway. yesterday was, it was Will, Will by himself in the boardroom. Yeah. Anyway, oh. we got a lot of fun stuff coming up. But next week is actually going to be amazing. I'm not going to say what it is just yet, but just, uh, you know, be ready for it. And <laughs> I do want to thank our uh, patronage. A lot of new people have kind of hopped on the board. Uh, the train of our Patreon lately. And I think it's really cool that more people are wanting to support us and what we do, especially since, as we say way too often, the Patreon goes exactly directly back into new ground. So it funds artists and segments and stuff like that. So, uh, Josh, do you want to do the honors and read the three tiers of our, our patrons this time with some new ones? Oh, I don't have that in front of me. Okay. What do you do oh, usually? You kind of like whisper the smaller ones and then you know, okay. Talk. So, I, I do the first ones in this voice, yeah. and then I do the second ones in this voice, and then I just scream the rest. You got this. Okay. Well, I got this. Well, we have a, uh, our first $3 tip level patron. Uh, so his name is uh, Danielson. And then we have our regular uh, $5 base tier. We got Pluffmite, Charissa, Boozle, Zachary Jones, Bacon, 
Godly guard. Great teen, GR18 vids, 14 kids. I'll ask him how he likes that name to be said. And a uh, kid, K1D. And our mid tier, I'm already getting louder. I'm doing this badly. Our mid tier is Commander Ken. And then our 20 tiers. Uh, thank you guys so much for being part of this. Spectrally and Tom Fall. You guys are great. <laughs> That was the yelling. That was, that yeah. was your yelling? Uh, wow. wow! Look, I love an got apartment complex, all right? <laughs> got and then the playground. Oh. He's got a funny yell. You just sound like someone good. grabbed your throat him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I turn that to make people up. Thank you for listening to the New Grounds Podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash NGP Discord. For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.